watching the station that's working for you. Now, WMAR 2 News. I'm Christian Schaefer with your WMAR 2 News update. Two separate investigations now underway after the death of a Baltimore City employee who fell in a large vat of water. The Baltimore City Department of Public Works has now identified Trina Cunningham as the worker who died this week at the Tapsco Wastewater Treatment Plant. She was a maintenance supervisor who'd worked for DPW for more than 20 years, but on Monday she fell off a catwalk 20 feet down into a water filtration system. Maryland Occupational Safety and Health is investigating. That is the state's division that attempts to ensure safety in the workplace. Baltimore City's DPW also investigating and will be inspecting every tank and catwalk at that facility. The attorney for the woman who was once accused in the stabbing death of her stepmother and then blaming a panhandler now says he'll ask for bail for his client because the murder charge against her has been dropped. Valeria Smith's attorney, Brandon Mead, talked one-on-one -on -one with WMAR 2 News on Tuesday. Smith and her father, Keith Smith, had both been accused of killing Keith Smith's wife, Jacqueline, back in December, then making up a story that a panhandler did it. This is a story that got national attention late last year. The two were arrested in Texas while making an apparent run for the border. On Monday, prosecutors in Baltimore dropped the murder and other serious charges against Valeria Smith, so now she's only charged with accessory to murder after the fact. Her attorney says he's not sure yet whether Valeria Smith will testify against her father. The reality is she was in the car, um, but she was not involved. She had no pre knowledge of what her, you know, father was going to do. And she was uh, in our belief uh, and, and through, I believe, the state's uh, charging documents, their belief now is that she didn't know. Keith Smith still does face murder charges. According to online court records, he is due in court for an arraignment on that murder charge later this week. Two major projects aimed at relieving traffic congestion in Maryland are up for an important vote in Annapolis today. The Board of Public Works will vote on widening the BW Parkway from Baltimore to Washington. For that to happen, the state would have to get control of the parkway from the National Park Service. That's one of the issues being talked about today at the Board of Public Works. Uh, the other one is very controversial in the D.C. area. It involves the widening of I-495, the Capitol Beltway, and I-270 that runs north of the Beltway. Several people who live in that area have a lot of concerns that widening that route would cause environmental concerns. There's also supposed to be toll lanes on that route. Governor Hogan, though, a big supporter of that proposal. We'll see if it passes on the Board of Public Works today. New rules being talked about for dockless scooters in Baltimore. Baltimore City would like to hear from you about those proposals over the next month. Some of them would be a citywide speed limit for these dockless scooters of 15 miles an hour and also reduced speed zones for some areas like the Inner Harbor, the Promenade from Federal Hill to Canton. There would also be no ride zones that include MIT Bank Stadium, Oriole Park, Camden Yards, and all of the parking lots associated with the stadiums. You can leave comments on the Department of Transportation's website in the city. Of course, that ransomware attack still going on. You'd have to be able to get to the website. You can also submit your comments at the Department of Transportation headquarters downtown at the building on East Fayette Street. And now from WMAR 2 News, Maryland's most accurate forecast. Happy hump day everyone on this hump day getting up and over that hump. We are going to warm things up. The heat and humidity return and strong to severe thunderstorms are possible as we head more towards the afternoon evening time frame. The muggy meter will continue to rise this morning. It's been nice and pleasant out there, but by the afternoon we'll definitely feel the case of the muggies once again. We're going to watch for the potential for severe weather. If we do have more clouds in here, that could limit the possibility for severe weather as we head more towards the afternoon. If we have more sunshine, oh yeah, expect to get some wind and also some hail that will be the primary threat. So on a scale of one to five, we are in a one, a marginal risk for severe weather for today. Look at the timing. So thinking between about three o'clock and 10 o'clock this evening, that will get some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms to move in. And once again, some of those will be on the strong, the severe side. So global running day looks like this warm and humid with those thunderstorms. The best time to do some running be in the morning by the afternoon. Again, the heat and humidity will be here. It'll be hot as we head towards your Thursday and then that cold front. Oh yes, Christian will feel the effects as we head into Friday into the weekend. Okay, thanks very much, Lynette, and stick with us online at WMAR2news.com all day long for updates on top stories and breaking news. And for news and weather on the go, you can download the WMAR2 News apps in the App Store. It's got live radar, and you can set up breaking news alerts to come straight to your phone. Thanks for watching. I'm Christian Schaefer. This WMAR2 News update is sponsored by Jones Junction.